Uh, what's the next atom? Uh, nitrogen. All right, I think that's the one you'd ask me a question about, so let's go on to that. So again, let's try to draw, uh, figure out what the molecular orbital diagram would look like for nitrogen. Okay. How many electrons is this nitrogen contributing? Seven. Seven, because it's got an atomic number of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If we were only doing the valence electrons, we would say it's in the fifth column, and we would only put in five electrons, but we're still doing everything. Okay, and we still want to follow Hunt's rule and put these all in separate p orbitals, and the same deal for this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, what do the molecular orbital picture look like? Is it, should we use the same pattern of molecular orbitals as before or different? I think it's the same. How do we know? Just because we look it up in the table. If you look it up in the table, you'll see that the table in the book has the same picture for nitrogen as it did for carbon and boron. So I think one of you was having some trouble figuring out what these dashes look like, but yeah. it should just, we just look at the table. The table tells us the same dashes as before. I think one of you maybe had three dashes in a row. I'm not quite sure. Um, why you thought we would have the three dashes here, but I don't think we're ever going to have a picture with three dashes, at least, uh, yeah, not while we're just working with S and P orbitals. The sigma is a, a single dash by itself, and the, the pi is two dashes next to each other, but there's never going to be any need for three. One thing to point out here is you want to think totally separately between the dashes and the electrons. Um, so changing the, number, the electrons here hasn't had any effect on where the dashes are. Also, a dash still exists even if there's no electrons in it. Sometimes students only think that an, or they, they think that an orbital doesn't even exist if there's no electrons in it. Well, that's not true. Just like a, a pocket still exists even if there's no, nothing in it. It's just an empty pocket. Well, we can have an empty orbital as well. All right, so now how many electrons do we have total to place? 14. 14? Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right, now I'm going to place the ninth electron the 10th electron. Where does the 11th electron go? Here. The 12th electron, here. And now we have to move some electrons up here. All right, I think this is what you drew, so that's good. That was correct. All right, um, and now uh, let's calculate the bond order. What number should I put in here? And how about here? Uh, four. Okay, so our bond order would be? Three. Okay. Does that make sense? Or not? Oh, that makes sense because nitrogen and nitrogen is the triple bond. I'm glad that you thought about that. It's good that you're trying to match that up. If you drew a Lewis structure for nitrogen, if you used your first semester skills to draw a Lewis structure for nitrogen, this is what the Lewis structure would look like. So that's good. Uh, and there really are three bonds. So the molecular orbital theory is giving us the right uh, point of view. So 
um, is, does, is this uh, have a high bond energy or a low bond energy? Is it hard or easy to tear apart these two nitrogens? We know that triple bonds are stronger than double bonds, which are stronger than, stronger than single bonds, and this is true. Nitrogen gas is a very stable gas. Nitrogen gas is a very stable gas, which would be predicted both from our Lewis diagram and also now from our molecular orbital theory. This high bond order indicates that this should be a very happy bond. We can also see that here if we notice that if we look in the, um, the orbitals that were made out of the p orbitals, we're only filling up bonding orbitals. We haven't filled up any of these anti-bonding orbitals if we just focus on the orbitals that came from the p's. That's just another way of seeing that we have a high bond order. Um, because if we had, we're filling up some of these anti-bonding orbitals, that would lower our bond order. So the higher the bond order, does that mean it's more stable? Yes. Paramagnetic or diamagnetic? Diamagnetic. Again, diamagnetic. Okay, well, you guys, had, I think, mentioned that this was the one, one of them was giving you some difficulty. Mm -hmm. I think we can see now, though, this isn't really any more tricky than any of the other examples we've seen so far. Um, they're all following kind of the same pattern. So the, the last three have all been a kind, of, kind of the same order of difficulty. For all of them, we have to look up the pattern of orbitals from the book. Then we just have to count the number of electrons and just carefully use the Aufbau principle and Hunt's rule to place all those electrons. Make sense?